So this is one of my favorite places, guys, because you can see that it's floor to ceiling artifacts and it's super organized. How and big so, is this place? Oh, this is the size of a couple of football fields. Wow. Just think back to the famous Indiana Jones scene where yes. they're storing the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Welcome to that warehouse. In archaeological terms, when we're talking about the United Kingdom, we're talking about what we would call Iron One, or the transition between Iron One and Iron Two. This entire section is Iron One material, which would be roughly from about 1200 to 1000. So if you want to understand what the period of the judges would like, and that transition mm -hmm. from, say, Samuel into Saul, what was the material culture like, this is it. This is what we would call a collared rim jar. Very typically Israelite. You find one of these, for example, inside a four-room house with an absence of pig bones, mm -hmm. and now we've, we've got ethnic indicators that we're dealing with a different material culture than had preceded them. The pottery is somewhat static at the beginning because, remember, God had told them, you're going to live in houses you didn't build. You're going to occupy cities right. you did not construct. They really don't know a whole lot about pottery making at this point. So when they come in, let's say around the year 1400, mm -hmm. the pottery types don't really change much until around the year 1200. So those first couple of centuries, they're very homogenous with the Canaanite Amorite culture that's here. Which makes sense. They're learning from they're them learning how, right. how, to, how to make pottery. Well, one of the reasons I appreciate coming to a place like this and looking at this and learning about it is because Quite frankly, I don't know that much about pottery. And so there's a separation between what I know and what I need to know. And I think in doing so, we understand the context of the way those verses are written and the people of the time. For most people, when they hear pottery or the study of pottery, they would just naturally think, that has got to be so boring. <laughs> Digging up <laughs> broken ceramics out of the dirt, it's gotta be all the same. And what you've shown us is it's not. No, it's not. It shows the development of a culture, artistic expression, and it's fascinating. One of the greatest things about my job is that I learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yes, I'm an expert, but all that has done is give me the uh, ability to understand how much I don't know so that then I can add to it. I just had this strong desire to understand their culture then and there in the setting so that I can peel the whole thing back and reevaluate what I believed and why I yeah. believed it, set it in a context and go from there. I think there's a resurgence in that. I think that there, even the, the generation coming behind us, there's a strong desire for that information. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This is only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.